One of the most seemingly daunting tasks that faces many novice miniature painters, as well as some intermediate miniature painters, is the art of painting flesh. Whether it be human flesh, monster flesh, anything along those lines, getting it to look real on the tabletop can be kind of difficult. Today, that's what we're going to be talking about. Hey guys, welcome to Dice Junkies Paint Lab. My name is Tim from Elder Justice Studios, and today we're going to be painting flesh. So this is going to be the first video in probably a three-part video series on painting a specific miniature. The miniature that I've chosen for this comes from a game that I still have some stuff that I need to paint, that is Fallout Wasteland Warfare. And the first miniature is going to be the Tech Enslaved Survivor. So, Fallout Wasteland Warfare, you've seen my Deathclaw, you've seen me do a Super Mutant Hound, um, pretty much I've done the bad guys out of this. Now we're going to switch over to the other side and start doing the good guys, um, or at least <laughs> good enough to help the sole survivor. So with this video, I'm strictly focusing on the basics for the miniature, followed by the flesh, uh, the, the actual skin of the survivor. Some people find it hard, and it can be. I mean, getting it to look real on the tabletop is a challenge sometimes. But hopefully, if you follow along with what I'm doing on this video, hopefully you'll get some good tips and you'll be able to do some stuff on your own. So let's get started. So here is the miniature. We have from Fallout Wasteland Warfare, the Tech Enslaved Survivor. I've already primed it with Vallejo's Black Primer. Now I'm going to use Vallejo's White Primer to do some Zenithal highlighting. And for this guy, I'm actually going to do a lot of Zenithal highlighting. He's out in the sun. Um, the highlights are going to be a whole lot more so. But the idea behind it, because we are going to go back and highlight everything using the paints themselves, but this adds to the effect. So if you're not familiar with Zenithal highlighting, the idea is that you want to use, and you can do this with a brush if you want to, it's a little bit easier to do with an airbrush or a spray can. You can hold just from one direction and you're using it to only hit the top and the sides. Uh, if this was a dungeon miniature or a darker miniature, I would even just do the top. Let there be a lot more shade. So now that it has dried, I'm going to take the medium level of my flesh shades here. This one is uh, Army Painter's War Paint's Barbarian Flesh. And I am going to, using two thin coats, I'm going to base coat the entire miniature. Well, the flesh of the entire miniature. So you don't want too much on there. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit off of the brush here that was too much. Uh, but you want to make sure that it's just a thin, even coat. Uh, this first, layer doesn't have to be especially pretty but do your best to stay away from getting on the non flesh parts the cleaner you can do it here from this starting base coat the easier it's gonna make your life later on when you go back and and finish the actual miniature itself and do the clothing the armor the the weapons, everything else. So as you can see, I'm really just putting a thin layer down and the no special techniques used here. The, the main thing to do is just to make it even. And some of that white is going to show through. That's why we're going to do the second coat. And here I'm doing the second coat. So, 
as you can see, whereas the first was splotchy, like I was just talking about, with that second thin coat on top of it, it really smooths everything out and gives you a good baseline to go for them. You'll hear other painters, um, the, the Warhammer guys, uh, they talk about using two thin coats all the time. And the reason why is because it's a good idea. Uh, you could get the same amount of coverage by using a thicker paint, but brush strokes are gonna go through. You don't want that. So now I'm gonna take my darkest flesh tone this is Cardic Flesh from P3. I've thinned it down a good bit, almost to glaze level. And I am just going to outline the crevices. Anywhere where there's shadows. And add that bit of darkness in. So, define the muscles with this. Uh, hit underneath the arms, underneath the legs. Uh, get up in that crotchal area. But the main point of doing this is going to be to outline your shapes. The whole idea with painting flesh, painting muscles, is create shapes. Once you have the shapes, it is just a matter of making smaller and smaller shapes to highlight. It's probably the easiest way that I can explain it. We're going to do that over the entire miniature. Now I'm going to take a little bit of Citadel Shade. This is Reichland Flesh Shade. And I'm going to thin it down a good bit with water. You want it much thinner than it already is. And you don't want a lot on the brush because we're not going to use the normal shading technique. This is going to be a light glaze over the entire flesh of the miniature. So, doing this darkens up the outlines that you've already put on the miniature with the cardic flesh, but it's also going to kind of make the, the barbarian flesh and the cardic flesh uh, be a little bit more homogenous, uh, kind of blends them together. You're getting the effect here of doing multiple layers of glazing without actually glazing. Maybe I'll talk about glazing in another video. But for this one, since we're going to do the entire miniature for this, over several videos probably, I'm just going to go with a kind of a cheap uh, trick. Works though. But as you can see, I'm not letting it glob up. It's still going to run into the creases because it is thinned down, but not a ton. All right, now, after that has dried, those shapes that we created, where the muscles are, I'm gonna go back over with a thinned down barbarian flesh. Now, now you may ask, why am I going over that? Why didn't I just use the Reichland flesh shade to you know go into the deep crevices why am I going over all that work that I just did well it's all about layers and when you thin this down you're still gonna have a little bit of that darkness underneath and you don't want you want to leave a little bit of that dark barbarian flesh over you don't want to cover the entire shape like I said it is smaller shapes as you go just want to make sure that as you're doing this as I'm trying to do right now you have even and clean coats no brush no brush strokes because you're going to be going over this with thinner and thinner paint so for the face, we're going to do a little bit different. You're almost drawing the outline of the face on this, or at least that's what I'm attempting. I'm going to do the top of the jaw, the jawbone, uh, the bottom of the jaw, bridge of the nose and the forehead, 
and get the the chin underneath and then we'll also do the ears as well make sure you get both sides and try to do them as even as possible and then we'll do the back of the head now back of the head and the sides of the head I'm probably gonna come back and make it look a little bit more like a shaved head but we'll get to that later. So now I'm going to take my lightest flesh tone here, and that is Citadel's Flayed One Flesh. And mix it about 50-50. Thin down a good bit. We're actually doing this one even thinner than I did before. And this is going to be almost to the point of uh, this is about the same thin uh, same viscosity as I did for the cardic flesh that almost glaze and this smaller shapes just like before and again evenness, uh, smoothness, that is the key. Remember when you're adding these highlights on, uh, when you're doing highlights for anything, you just want to think, what does the light hit? Yeah, you know, He's got that wrench on his side, it's not going to hit underneath the wrench. Um, that little line uh, on the inside of his thigh, it'll hit that. It'll definitely hit that front of his leg right there, that front thigh muscle that I don't know what it's called. But it needs to be highlighted, no matter what it's called. The other thing to remember is the kneecaps. You make sure that you hit that, and once you get to the hands, I'm going to hit each individual finger, make them kind of stand out a little bit. So now I'm taking almost pure flayed one flesh. It's got a little bit of that mixture underneath it, which is fine. But this is almost pure flayed one flesh. And I am going to... At this point, it is still doing smaller and smaller shapes. But these are almost lines. This is the top highlight that I'm going to do on this miniature but at least for the flesh so again muscle definition you he's out in the sun he's probably sweaty that uh, sunlight is just going to reflect off of his skin and again you only want to use a little bit here. This is fairly thin down. We don't want to make him super pale white uh, because in the end, I mean, he, he is from the wasteland. The, the sun is going to be beating down on him. We want him to have a little bit of a tan to him. But he's not quite as dark as the others. Um, he's He's been enslaved for a while. And you can use this same technique with a multitude of different colors as well. Just going dark to thin, uh, dark to light, starting with your medium as kind of a base. As you see, I am skipping the bottom half of his legs. Uh, the sun really doesn't hit too much on there, and we want to bring more attention to the top half of his body anyway add a little bit of a composition to this miniature even though uh, this is really only a, a tabletop quality uh, if I was gonna go for a little bit more in depth I'd probably actually do glazing on him um, but that would take a long time to do even though the glazes are thin and they dry fairly quickly uh, you, you still have to make sure that they're thoroughly dried in between, otherwise you're picking up the paint that you just put down. And I think after that's dry, we should be done. 
and there he is. So, flesh on a Fallout Wasteland Warfare tech enslaved survivor. Next time, we'll go more in detail on the face, finish that up, uh, do the hair, and start on the clothing. Awesome, guys. So that finishes part one of our three-part video series on how to paint the tech enslaved survivor from Fallout Wasteland Warfare. Hope that you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. Uh, check me out on eldritchashesstudios.com. I also have Instagram and Facebook. And for more videos, see playthrough of games and stuff like that, be sure to check out Dice Junkies on YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, Twitter, pretty much anywhere where you can get social media or videos, we are there. If you want to see more good stuff, get uh, higher quality videos, different things along those lines, if you can, hit us up on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash dicejunkies. Until next time, keep painting minis.